Hey everybody, uh, back for another prayer I'm gathering, but it's going to be a little bit different this week. And uh, as I mentioned last week, we're starting to do some interviews. But first of all, you know, we're going to have our, our prayer list. And if you're new to watching this, and some of you may start watching now that we're doing interviews with ministry staff, uh, let me know and I'll get you on the list to get the prayer list by email. And I'll be happy to put you on that as well. Okay, as I mentioned before, uh, we're going to be interviewing uh, ministry staff for the next several weeks. Hopefully all the vacations will work out so I can get everybody in. Uh, we have several people that are going to be out. Not always on vacation. I think our, our students are going somewhere. So, But anyway, I decided I would be first just to kind of see what it's like for me and to see what it's like for you. And I had to get somebody to interview me. And uh, Lana uh, agreed to do that. Of course, all of this she already knows. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and, and do it anyway. So let's uh, let's get started. All right. The first question is, where did you grow up? Well, you know, I grew up several places, but the place I remember most is Florale. You know, Florale is this little town right on the Alabama-Florida line. In fact, that's how it got its name, Florala. And uh, a little bit of it is actually in Florida, but the vast majority of it is in Alabama. And uh, some of you may ride through there going to the beach. Sometimes if you go down through Alabama, it's about an hour away from several of the Gulf beaches. And it was a great place to grow up. Uh, I was in a great neighborhood. We all played together. So I enjoyed it. Kind of like a Mayberry. A little bit. Yeah. What are your earliest memories of church? Well, you know, I got my VBS shirt on because I'm working right now with uh, Carla Walter at the WIPS uh, VBS. And... Uh, I remember going to Vacation Bible School when I was a child. We'd have it two weeks, and it was great. I remember going from when I was really little, you know, we'd carry those big old flags in and have all that. It was just a great time. Uh, so that's one of my earliest memories, and uh, I'll never, you know, never have those back again, but really, really do enjoy thinking back to that time. Okay, advance the slides. Uh, my next question, what activities did you participate in growing up? Okay, uh, you know, the main thing I think about is sports. I played baseball and basketball because we had teams in the city. Um, I was tolerable in baseball, but I was pretty good in basketball, so I considered basketball to be my sport as I was growing up. What was home life like growing up? You know, that, that really is kind of a, a two-part question. Uh, the first part would take place in Alabama. I grew up in Florala and then later on up north in Andalusia, which we considered to be the big city because it had 10,000 people instead of uh, 3,000. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was mom and dad and me and my brother and sister, you know, and that's what it was like and that's what I thought it would always be like. But then uh, we moved to the Bahamas and everything changed. My brother and sister were both already in college. So it was like I was an only child at that point. And uh, I got to say, when I lived uh, in Alabama, I had lots of friends, felt comfortable doing everything, going to church, going everywhere. Well, that all changed when I moved to the Bahamas because nothing was like what I had remembered. Uh, and uh, so it was definitely a time for me to realize how to get along with people uh, that I was not exactly like. And I think that was one of the good things that happened, uh, the worst thing to me was the school system. I hope nobody that went to school with me is watching this. I'm sure they're not. But uh, I didn't learn a whole lot in school. In the Bahamas. In the Bahamas, that's right. But the best thing to me was when we would go out and visit the tourist areas. And uh, there'd be a lot of people there from all over the world. And they were all there to have a good time. So it was really kind of a, a nice atmosphere. The one thing, other thing I do remember is we had a whole lot of relatives, some that I didn't even know were relatives that wanted to come visit with us when we lived in the Bahamas. All right, next question. What was your first job? Okay, my first real job, and you know, people might cons not consider this a job for how little I got paid, but I spent two of the summers while I was actually still living in the Bahamas working at Shaco Springs Baptist Assembly, a place that you're familiar with, because mm -hmm. later on we would do conferences there and, and uh, spend a lot of time there. It's in Talladega, uh, as y'all call it, but Talladega, as we call it. And uh, I remember my first summer, I got $3 a day, not an hour, a day. 
and but they did provide room and board, uh, so that was good. Now the second year I worked, I got a raise. I got three fifty a day the second year, but that was my first job. Okay, what did you do on your first job? Oh, you 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 ask <laughs> another question. Well, basically the first year I worked with the grounds crew, which meant we we mowed and we cleaned out a lot of the the uh, weeds and and vines and things that had filled up the area. We and Shaco Springs is kind of in the edge of some some hills. Now, I wouldn't call them mountains, mm -hmm. uh, but we would have to mow up and down. So it was an interesting thing. In the second year, I worked on the uh, laundry crew. We had a lot of hotels. I'd say five different hotels. Only one of them would be what you consider to be even a motel. But we had to change out linens uh, once or twice a week, and we had to take those. We took them actually to the school for the either the blind or the deaf that they had in Talladega to get that done, and we'd have to take it, and we'd have to pick it up, and then we'd have to, you know, pass it out. So that was my job the second year. So that was in high school. Now you're headed for college. Uh-huh. So what was your college experience like? Well, you know, once again, just like I said, there were uh, kind of two high school experiences. There were two college experiences. The first year I was in college, I went to Sanford University, the Baptist College in uh actually Baptist University, I guess I should call it, in Birmingham. My brother was in school there. He was actually a senior that year, and I was a freshman. My folks were still in the Bahamas, so I was near family, and that was a good thing. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it was really a good atmosphere because several of my friends that I worked at Shaco with or had met through being in my brother's church because he was, uh, even though he was doing music at the time, he, he worked with the youth a lot as well, so I knew some of them. And uh, so they were my friends uh, in, in college. The, the worst part was weekends because they'd all go home on weekends. And my home was in the Bahamas. I think I went home one time uh, during some kind of break uh, and I saw them then. So that was, that was the only bad part was on, on uh, the Saturdays because on Sunday, you know, I'd get to go to church and all. But Saturday was kind of a lonely day. Then uh, I moved to Mobile. My folks moved back to the States and, and my dad got a job there. So I enrolled in the University of South Alabama and uh, that was a different kind of experience. You know, before I had lived on campus and had been part of everything that was on campus and this time I lived at home and it's pretty much like a commuter experience. And you went from being in a religious a yeah, Baptist from a, school to a secular campus. And while I was in that secular campus, that's when God called me to ministry. Who, who knew, you know? All right, my next question. What was your college church experiences like? Oh, as I said before, there are two of these, but both of these were really good. Uh, the church I went to in, in, in Birmingham, a lot of my friends went to church there, and we were basically the whole college group, other than some kids who had grown up in the church. Uh, one of our older friends, uh, I call him a friend, he was an acquaintance, he became a friend while we were there, uh, because he had been our boss at Shaco, and so we all didn't like him at that time, but we got to like him more uh, when we were together with him at church. But we were the college uh, class there, and, you know, uh, remember later on you and I went to a ball game, and we actually went to the teacher's house. Do yeah. you remember that? The yeah. small woods. Uh, they really had a big impact on my life. Uh, and then when I moved to Mobile, uh, went to Airport Boulevard, and uh, really, rather than just being with the college, a lot of the college kids there worked with the youth. Yeah. And so that was a good experience as well. And so you left college, you graduated from college. Yes. And then you went to seminary. I did. What was your seminary experience like? Well, you know, we started, uh, actually I had uh, been contacted by a church to work part-time in Dallas. And I went out there and on the day I got to Dallas, my dad passed away. Now he had been sick for some time, but we didn't know, yeah. you know, didn't know his death was imminent. But as soon as I got there, I had to fly back. And that happened May 29th of 1981. And, uh, but really things got better from there. You know, we were, we were at the church in Dallas for a year and I realized that I didn't want to take four or five years to finish uh, seminary because they only allowed me to go to class two days a week and not every class was offered every semester on Tuesday, Thursday, so. And you also didn't get to go at all during the summer. That's true, so anyway, uh, we decided to move over to Fort Worth, 
And once we did that, the school went much better. And uh, you taught in Irving yeah. for three years, is that right? Because you continued mm -hmm. teaching even after I left. But uh, finished school in uh, December of 1983, just a little bit after some of the guys that started with me because I caught up some in the summers. And uh, then, actually before I, I could go to the, our first church, my mother passed away. So during my seminary experience, both parents uh, passed away. She actually died on February 9th of uh, 1984. Next question. Next question. How did you meet your spouse? That would be you. That would be me. Uh, so I talked earlier about going to Airport Boulevard. Did I say it was Airport Boulevard? I think I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when I got to, I knew nobody at the church. I told in a previous uh, thing that I found it in the phone book, and it was the first one listed. Actually, it's the second one listed, but the first one is an African-American church, and I don't think I'd have felt comfortable there, <laughs> called Aimwell Baptist. But Airport Boulevard was right after that, and I went to visit there. And didn't know at the time that Lana had recently just started going there because her best friend's father was Minister of Education there. So uh, that's where we met. And, you know, we didn't date right away, but mm -hmm. we wound up going to a lot of things because groups kind of went to things. And, yeah. you know, there wasn't a whole lot of dividing up and dating. Uh, but I wound up at the same place as she did several times. And then... Well, uh, I was also a senior in high school. When yeah, she was still in high I was just starting my sophomore year. Uh, so... Anyway, yeah, that's what that's what happened, and then we started dating. We would go to some movies because you got free tickets, and then we would go to some college football games because you got free tickets. Free tickets. Uh, but it was it was a great time, and uh, then we got married on in August of 1978. We dated two years. So yeah, yeah. Way to your heart was not by food; it was by free tickets. Well, I'm telling you what, we had a good time at those movies, and had one of those movies, the song uh, played at our wedding. Yeah. So, all right, so what is your family like now? Well, most of you know the ones that are here, but just to say, you know, uh, your mom passed away, uh, what, August 5th, 2010, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, all, Lana's an only child. All she has left is her dad, and uh, he is going to turn 92 on August the 5th. Notice those dates are the same. Yeah, that was kind of tragic that... Her mom passed away on her dad's birthday. But anyway, we do have two children. Many of you know them. Some of you don't know John as well you, as you know Beth. But John is 34. Uh, he lives in Conway. He works for Brady Industries and does a lot of driving around in his truck and uh, working with uh, some janitorial stuff and some maintenance stuff there. So that's John. And then uh, Beth is 28. That's hard to believe that she's 28. Uh, but she works for... Uh, well, Sky, and she actually gets to work from home. Uh, doesn't mean it's easy job, but uh, the the place they were working uh, was not a good place. It, and it was also bought out. And it was bought out. So anyway, yeah. she works from home, and of course she's given us our two grandchildren. Uh, they are lovely, intelligent, and sometimes well behaved. Mia is three and a half, and Abby is one and a half. So uh, that's the family. And your brother is still in Tyler, Oh, yeah, that, Texas. Which I, you are an only child. I have a brother who's a pastor <laughs> of Green Acres and Tyler. My sister lives in Cedartown, Georgia. So, yeah, they're all still living. Yep. Okay, so let's talk about vacations. What kind of vacations do you enjoy? You know, a couple of different ones. Family vacations, we've enjoyed going to the beach. In fact, we've got one planned coming up in October. I'm not sure. John, I don't think, is going to be able to go with us, but I think he can feed our animals, so that's a good thing. Uh but also, uh, since 2009, Lana and I have gone on some cruises, and we've enjoyed those as well. Okay. What are some of your hobbies? Okay. Uh, I enjoy uh, exercising now, mainly since my gym is closed. That's walking. And I enjoy reading books and watching sports, which we don't have a whole mm -hmm. lot of. And I did enjoy playing golf, and hopefully at some point I'll start playing golf again. Do you collect anything? Well, you know, there are several things I collect. The thing most people would know are, are, are the shot glasses that are in my office, and that got started in the summer of 2005. Beth went on a trip. Her first, her first youth trip. Her first youth trip to Atlanta, and they were at Stone Mountain, and the minister of music, Alan Moore, said, here, you should buy him this nice little cup that's got his name on it. And she didn't know it was a shot glass, but she brought it to me, and we let her know at that point. But we've gotten several. I say I have over 100 shot glasses now. Yep. All right. 
What are some meaningful mission trips that you have taken? You know, probably the most meaningful ones are the ones to Honduras. <laughs> and uh, I should let you push this button. Anyway, uh, because I get to go door to door and share the gospel. Now, I did enjoy the trip to Italy, but I felt more like a tourist there because we spent a lot of time uh, going and seeing things. You know, that, that was pretty cool. Uh, but we only worked like maybe two hours a day with, and we were working with the local church, and they were all English speaking. So that was that was good too. But I really enjoy going to Honduras. All right. So what is your favorite restaurant? Uh, one word answer: Colton's. <laughs> That's true. Hello. We're starting over because we got a phone call uh, while we were filming, and uh, that's my phone. And the way our phone system works now, it also goes to the computer. So Elvis was leaving me a voicemail. I'll see what it is later, and I'll give Elvis a call back. But we were uh, starting to share about my salvation experience, and I just want to say that, uh, you know, I joined the church when I was nine years old simply because my brother and sister had done that, and I'm not sure that the decision I made was sincere. So when I was about 14, I began to doubt my salvation, and, you know, as long as you're doubting the sal your salvation, the devil's going to keep you from growing in Christ. So I made the decision to go forward and say, listen, what I had done previously was not real and I need to accept, and I had already done that while I was yes. at camp, but I, I publicly professed my faith in Christ in front of the church and was rebaptized, and that was what I consider to be my real uh, salvation experience. So if there's some of you that feel that way, don't be ashamed. You just come down and take care of that anytime you feel like that you're led to do it. Hmm. Have you been baptized again? Well, yeah, I was baptized after that. Uh, but I was reaffirmed my baptism in, in the Jordan River, if that's when what you you're went, talking yeah, about. When you yeah. went to, got to go to Israel. Uh huh. All right, so what are your favorite scriptures? Okay, now this thing is locked up. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see if it'll move for this one. That's fine. Yeah, it did. Oh. Some of my favorite scriptures. I, you know, uh, I hate to say John 3.16 because for the longest it wasn't. But the reason I say John 3.16, which you know is is uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's kind of the King James Version. It's not always the one I use. But That's I use that. Learned. Yeah, I use that in my, in my uh, gospel presentation and that's really the turning point. And when you think about it, John 3.16 is really the turning point in history when Jesus came and died for our sins. And then I also like Galatians 2.20 uh, and I'm going to read this because I've got this in the CSB. I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So basically, when we become a Christian, we're crucified with Christ, and the only way we're alive is through Christ living in us. Okay? Okay. Those are them. All right. Do you have a favorite book of the Bible? You know, I really, really like the book of James, and uh, just because it's so practical, telling you what you need to do. And uh, I've always, ever since I studied it the first time, I felt like that was true. What are some ministry positions that you have held? Okay, my first job, you know, you actually worked in day camp when I did it at Dolphin mm -hmm. Way, didn't you? And I can, I can had, did my internship there uh, in, in college. And Dolphin Way Baptist Church in Mobile. Dolphin Way in Mobile, yeah, that was my first church job. And then I actually worked in their, educate, in their recreation building uh, we had a, a bowling alley and a gym, and we skated on the gym and had game rooms and all that stuff. That was my first job. And then I had the, the short-term job there in Dallas. And then after seminary, you were I... was minister of youth in Dallas. Yeah, I was. And uh, then uh, I, my first church after seminary was in Selma at Elkdale Baptist Church. I was minister of youth and education and enjoyed the education part more than youth. And it so, was 23 hours a day. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Much, because yeah. Because it was daytime for education and nighttime for youth. Yeah. So then uh, we moved to Huntsville, where I was minister of education at Jackson Way Baptist Church in Huntsville. We had, we really enjoyed that. And part of the decision to go just to education was John was born right at the end of our time in Selma. Yeah, and so we didn't think Selma was where we wanted to, to raise John at that point. Now, things may have improved there since we left. I'm not sure. But it was, mm -hmm. I mean, Lana had gotten her purse snatched and things like that. So uh, we wanted John to be in a safer place. So we were in Huntsville. Then uh, we moved to Montgomery, and I was minister of education at Ridgecrest Baptist Church there. And uh, that's where Beth was born. 
And uh, then after that, I came here. So I've been here for almost 21 years now, and it's been great. I love all the people here. What is the most fulfilling part of ministry to you? Okay, right now, uh, I would say of making these videos. No, that's not true, because we seem to be making them all the time. But anyway, I, I really get fulfilled in training teachers, either if they have never taught before or if they want to improve teaching. Uh, you know, when I was in seminary, the ba best course I ever had was Principles of Teaching by Dr. Leroy Ford. And that just completely opened my eyes into what teaching actually was. You knew about it because you yeah. had gone through school and, and gotten an education degree, uh, but I would not done that. And uh, so uh, that's what I enjoy. And also really, really enjoy spending time with the senior adults and doing activities with them. Okay, that was my last question. All right, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this. We've enjoyed doing it for you. And uh, also remember, we're going to still have our prayer time. I hope you've got your prayer sheet there. We're going to have a word of prayer together, and then you spend time in prayer for those folks you've got on the list. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here and the opportunity to do this. And Lord, we just know... Uh, that you can even use interviews like this to help help lift people up, Father, to help edify them. And I just pray that you do that. Maybe something I've said has encouraged someone. And, Lord, I just pray that you be with each of us during this difficult time. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching.